Hey traders, happy Saturday. Today we're gonna to be splitting up my weekly analysis into two different videos. One will be released tomorrow and one will be released obviously today. So uh, first of all, I've got a couple different markets that I wanna review with you guys from the previous week, as well as uh, this upcoming week, how I'm positioned or how I plan to be positioned both from a fundamental and from a technical perspective. Today we're gonna to start technical with oil, not a market that I usually trade and uh, if you don't trade it, bear with me. There's still some great learning opportunities here, I think. And again, oil is not something that I trade that often, uh, but recently I found a really great setup on oil that I wanted to review with you guys. Okay, so looking at the four hour chart here uh, is one thing, but first let's start at the daily. The daily chart was in a clear upward trend. Uh, no matter you know if you use indicators or whatever you use, this chart is trending up very well, okay? So I was actually looking for pullback buys because I'll, I'll get to the fundamentals in a moment, but I like oil long uh, just in general. Let's just go with that and I'll start technically and then come back to the fundamentals. So in terms of oil's price action here, we noticed that we put in this high, okay? So we put in this high and many traders actually thought that this could be the high for oil for some time, 92.5 got struck and many traders started to see the selling and uh, got nervous about it. Now, I actually figured the thing about oil and if you know how oil tends to trade, it tends to be a ridiculous uh, trending market when it wants to be, right? It's one of those things, it's kind of like gold. Gold can kind of be range bound and then all of a sudden just explode in one direction for a prolonged period of time. Same thing with oil, commodities, tend to have that nature to them, especially when there's a supply and demand deficit, which we will discuss in just a few minutes. So oil comes down to this level. And I wanna show you guys how I structured this trade because I have to be very transparent. I took a losing trade before I took a winning trade on this chart. So on a lower time frame off like the one hour chart, I was looking, let's, let's put ourselves back in time for just a moment. Price comes here. And I say, okay, I want to be a, an oil buyer. But this is a really important lesson for you guys who are trying to figure out your trading, trying, if you, especially if you trade in a similar manner to me. I have to be very, very transparent because it's important to showcase this for your learning uh, as you go through this stuff. So let me show you something. I wanted to be long oil. I knew I had a oil bias was long, okay? I wanted to be long oil. However... Uh, I had more than one entry idea, okay? So <clears throat> essentially, I wanted to get long oil and I was willing to give it a shot in this area. So I actually ended up buying oil and getting stopped out shortly after. So if we click through this thing, uh, I wanna show you that this is important stuff. Like sometimes you just think you have a good entry and I, I felt pretty good about this one. I was like, okay, this looks clearly like an area of support. And sure enough, price did not agree with me and ended up stopping me out. Fortunately, however, I'm going to show you the candle that got me involved in just a second. So price comes down now to my area of support, right? The secondary area. So I had this first area and I had this second area. Both of these were places where I was willing to give this a try. And this is important with trading. Nobody knows for certain what's gonna happen in the markets. In my view and in my way of trading, I am taking, with all of my trades, I'm taking attempts or tries. I'm not certain with my analysis. I'm not guaranteeing that something's going to happen. I'm taking tries to see if my bias is correct and if the market disagrees with me, I'm stopping out quickly. So what happens here is I take my first trade and I stop out, take a loss, pretty quick too. Within a matter of hours, I'm out of the trade for a loss. But after this rejection uh, closed, on the very next candle, I went long. And I felt very good that I had a decision-making candle here. And what I mean by a decision-making candle, a DMC, whatever you'd like to call it, doesn't matter. This area of support holding so strongly gave me a clear area to know, okay, I'm going to go long here and I'm going to put a stop below this because if price takes out that previous low, I have no business staying in oil longs because at that point, the bullish idea 
has been completely nullified. So I get into this trade and I say, okay, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a stop below the lows and I'm looking for a continuation to, but really beyond the highs. I'll get to that in just a second. But anyways, I put my stop loss below. This is really important. Stop loss placement here. I had a clear wick to work with. I love when I get a nice wick off a bottom or off a top because then I know a general area where price has kind of rushed to try liquidity. If you want to call it that, doesn't really matter. Again, I don't get fancy with my definitions. Price tried to come underneath here. Buyers got strong. That's all that matters. Buyers get strong. Okay, cool. That gives me an area to say, I know that if buyers are not strong enough to hold you know, past a retest into this zone at all, I should get out of the trade. So I get into my trade, I'm holding onto this thing and it just, it goes. And this is awesome, right? So, <clears throat> but notably, there's a couple things I wanna show you here. I don't have a take profit on my trade. Instead, I like to move my stop loss. So I'll introduce here on the chart a trailing stop. This white line is the initial stop. When we break and close above this area, I trailed my stop into profit. Sorry, let me see if I can get this to line up nicer. So I trail my stop just below market structure lows, okay? And you can see what ended up happening. What ends up happening is price does come all the way back. Uh, now, many traders, what they uh, will do is they'll look at the situation and they'll be, be, be very frustrated with it. But I actually stand by my analysis here because I think I played this one pretty well, according to the way that I, I trade. Uh, here's the thing. Stop loss is below. I had a good risk management on this trade or, or my risk management was proper. Price breaks through the highs and that was my signal to go ahead and trail stops further. What I was looking for was to give price room to come back and potentially move higher. But I had some people ask me after this stop loss trailed out for a profit, right? I closed uh, at one point I was up like 2,800 bucks and then I closed for like 1,600. So I had some people say like, Nick, why wouldn't you take partials or take profits or do something with it? Well, the problem is you could say that all the way up, right? People will always kind of wonder if they should have taken a profit sooner or taken partials. I trail stops and I understand the pros and the cons that come with that. For me, uh, this was a point to say, uh, I'm gonna lock in a profit. And if this market comes down and takes me out without holding this structure, that's my cue to get out of the trade. And I did, and I'm glad that I did because look what happened. Price comes back up to that very same level, rejects it and pushes lower to end out the week. All of that to say, we just walked through the technical basis of my trade. If this was helpful to you so far, just do me a quick favor. If, if the technical breakdown here was helpful to you, uh, can you just comment down below in the comment section? That this would be very nice to hear or see in the comment section. It lets me know. First of all, thumbs up the video if you don't mind. It really does help the algorithm. But then also, if you could just let me know it was helpful in the chat, like type that out, like it was helpful or like, thanks for that, that was good. Something of that nature will just let me know that these technical breakdowns, maybe I should do some more of them on my channel. Anyways, let's now break down quickly the fundamentals as well. Okay, fundamentals of oil the FA of oil. Right now, uh, I've discussed this a lot. I've talked about the fact that when it comes to FA, uh, fundamental analysis, for oil, it's all about supply and demand. And I'm not talking about price action or support and resistance levels. I'm talking about supply and demand of the physical commodity oil. Is there a huge amount of supply? Is there a huge amount of demand? Well, here's the thing, supply, is very limited right now. Russia and Saudi Arabia, some of the world's major exporters of the stuff, the oil, they, they've they actually been very, very clear about restricting the supply that's going out to the global market. That has risen the demand, relatively speaking. Remember, if supply goes down and there's still strong demand, that's gonna cause price to rise. And inversely, if price sees, if fundamentals see a decrease in supply, then demand is uh, going up. If, if supply goes up, it's going to go down, right? That, that's a very simple uh, equation, right? Well, I am still bullish because this has not really changed. What did change is that we had some PCE numbers that came out, showed a little cooling in the US economy, which may decrease demand on the oil side. But granted, we still have jobs numbers coming up this, this next week. 
there's many things fundamentally that I'm still watching for. But the Saudis and the and the Russia uh, Russian uh, you know idea of of restricting oil when they have it is still very real. And so that has me bullish on oil. So now let's speak into the future, right? I'm not not only going to show you hindsight bias. Let's talk about what's next. For me, I am looking to perhaps repeat this area. I think 88.5 could be a, a relatively short term, like a, another area of support and perhaps a floor for the price of oil that maybe you know, uh, whoever is kind of pushing the oil market around right now, the Saudi Arabians or uh, Russians, whatever is going on, right? That may be kind of a new floor that they want. Now, why do they want oil prices higher? Well, they have it and they sell it. Obviously, they want it to go higher. Um, but that is, of course, also an inflationary thing for many countries around the world. Think about it. If oil prices are high, more people are out there having to spend more money and so are companies. So they have to pass those costs on to their consumer resulting in price rises. So elevated oil prices for a prolonged period of time from a fundamental perspective can raise core inflation. As weird as it sounds, energy is left out of core CPI, but over time it can trickle its way in anyways if they stay elevated. So it's an interesting story and it continues to put pressure on markets around the world. So oil will be one that is still going to be on my watch list. Also, oil has been a bullish signal on the edge finder for a few weeks now. And I just want to go through this for a second. Uh, this oil breakdown this week, again, uh, I really only traded oil uh, in terms of a momentum trade this week. I had some options trades, but we won't go too far into that. In terms of oil, I was bullish on oil because the COT, actually, we do need to take a look at the COT data. Maybe we'll do that in just a minute. The COT bias was really bullish, right? Um, the retail sentiment is pretty pretty mixed, not enough to give us a signal. Seasonally, uh, September was bullish. And we should check seasonally if that's going to be the case for October for oil as well, because we are about to enter October, obviously. Uh, the trend was to the upside. GDP growth has been uh, pretty... Well, actually, this actually flipped just recently. Of course, we had GDP numbers this past week, and um, they showed some slight decline. They showed a decrease in uh, GDP growth, so slowing a little bit. Uh, inflation, it was, by the way, the numbers for U.S. was 2.2, uh, 2.1 compared to 2.2 expected percent uh, quarter, over quarter, uh, quarter over quarter growth. Inflation is still hot. Of course, that is uh, a driver for, for the oil world. Uh, unemployment um, still, well, actually, what was the latest job statistics out of the U.S.? Let's, we have more of that coming, by the way, so that will be really interesting to take a look at. So here's the oil chart, and actually you can see, look at this, guys. Oil has been a bullish signal on the edge finder since, let's go back and see, September 7th. So it's just caught the bulk of this move, which has been awesome. Um, so we could pull up oil. COT data shows really long bias there in terms of oil. If we go take a look at Smart Money Tracker, and you guys can feel free to pause the video if you'd like to look at this. This is the Smart Money Tracker on the Edge Finder. This tool allows you to view what institutional money is buying and selling. And um, this is a big week, actually. Because in terms of oil, let's see, oil slightly got bought by institutional money. What's kind of more interesting is you had NZD, SPX, CAD, Silver. These were our big buys of the week. We also had the Nikkei as well. Not something we talk about too often on this channel. This is the Japanese stock market. So a big increase in buying. So net by net, institutional money, let's see our top five here, top five uh, you know, buys by institutional traders. And if we take a look at our top five sells, we have platinum, the Dow, gold, interesting, pound, and, and czar. So gold is another one that's kind of interesting right now, guys. Take a look at oil, or sorry, we, we looked at oil. Let's take a look at gold. It's uh, its counterpart in the commodities world. Gold just looks, it looks terrible, to be completely honest. Gold looks really rough. Inflation, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the Federal Reserve looks very, very hawkish, and that is continuing. Of course, a strengthening dollar is going to put pressure on the gold market as well. So in terms of a quick price action breakdown on gold, uh, price retracing looks incredibly bearish, right? This looks really, really rough. Uh, so my bias, and I believe the edge finder's bias as well, is generally speaking, this coming week, I'm going to be looking to be pretty bearish on gold myself. Yeah, look at this. We get a minus four COT bias. Again, what you guys have to understand about our software, uh, in case you haven't already heard or picked up on it yet, 
The software helps me with the fundamentals and all the data that comes in. There's just too much data. If you want to be a professional trader and you want to look at data, professional traders use software to automate components of their analysis because there's simply too much data to look at. If you are aware that fundamentals are powerful and yet you don't have any assistance to interpret it, you're going to be spending hours reading articles and de you know digging through data and putting it in spreadsheets manually. That is so much more complicated than it needs to be. So what we've done is we've built this software. Uh, my company, when I say we, uh, I run a company called A1 Trading. We build tools for traders. It is what we do every single day. There's a team of 10 that I um, that my staff is is you know made up of, and we build software every day. So. Our primary focus is to deliver great data to traders and to help to decipher and interpret that data in the simplest way possible. So when we look at gold and we get COT showing us big selling went on in the gold world, you can see it's being reflected in the algorithm. The algorithm is giving a minus one for the COT component of its scoring. And we go through all the different variables, retail, uh, and this is referring to positioning from amateur traders. If they're super long, we wanna be short. If they're super short, we wanna be long. So in this case, retail traders are super long. They're buying gold, that's a bearish signal for us. Institutional money, the smart money is selling gold, we wanna be short, right? Seasonally, uh, gold is rough in September. As we go into October, I'm curious to look at that as well. Trend is to the downside, so on and so forth. Frank caught, Frank is uh, <clears throat> the co-creator of the Edge Finder. We've been working on this tool together for about a year and a half, and he's been trading with me for like seven years. We were great friends, and we, um, we he's my trading partner inside of our uh, trading community. Anyways, the stuff that we're doing here on the Edge Finder, we are trying to take in economic data and help interpret it for traders. If you would like a copy of this tool, there will be a link down below in the description where you can chat with someone on our team to get set up with a copy for a significant discount. And I'll do this, if you guys message us here today, we'll get you hooked up with extra discounted copies because if you made it 17 minutes into this video today, I just wanna say thank you. Your, your viewership, your dedication to this craft uh, with me we do genuinely appreciate our viewers. Uh, we obviously wouldn't be able to be a company without you guys. We wouldn't be able to build these amazing tools without the support of our community, our audience. And so as a thank you, if you guys would like a copy and you message us today, um, again, link at the top of the description, I'll show you what it happens. When you click this link, it's gonna open up a, a window like this. Uh, just chat with someone on my team and today, if you send us a message, we'll hook you up with significant discounts off of the tool. Just message us, we'll tell you more information. Um, but yeah, so again, if you made it this far in the video, I do really appreciate your viewership and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Message us if you want a copy. Again, um, we want more people to have copies. It's just as straightforward as that. Yes, obviously you wanna sell it, but so many traders have been significantly positively impacted. You can pull up our trust pilot reviews if you would like to and just see what people are saying about the Edge Finder. It is a incredible tool um, that, I've, that I've been so excited to build over the last year and a half with my team and uh, we look forward to getting more copies to people. So check it out. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.